This is not a kid-friendly show. <laughs> Yo, what's really good, my dudes? Welcome to another RuneScape News coverage video. This time, we're going to be going over a dev blog by Mod Curse regarding Mana False Reputation. So, without any further ado, let's just jump right into it. It says, Hey, all Mod Curse here on behalf of the Titans. This post is going to be dedicated to giving you some extra information about some specific XP rates, how best to gain a reputation in Mana False, and some highlights of the changes we are making to improve the experience. Please note any XP rates displayed in this thread are without any XP boosting equipment that is purely the base XP. So first up, covering Shifting Tombs. Due to the nature of Shifting Tombs, the experience and reputation earned can fluctuate massively based on a number of contributing factors, these being group size, sarcophagus spawns, chest spawns, rock spawns, urn spawns, and the tomb layout. The numbers that you get over an hour displayed through the tombs should come very close to the numbers stated in this image and i'll show an image right here you could pause if you want to check it out for yourself but there is the expected general xp rates for those associated skills etc as well as their associated levels so shifting tombs calculates the xp you will receive based on a level banding system these bands are 50 70 and 90. These consist of four core skills and four secondary skills. The core skills earn experience when completing a tomb, and the secondary skills award XP when smashing an urn. The core skills are agility, construction, dungeoneering, and thieving. Secondary skills are crafting, divination, prayer, and runecraft. To receive the full XP from a specific level banding, all eight skills must reach the level of the band. So to receive the full XP from a level 70 band, you will need 70 in all eight skills. Having level 90 in seven and the last skill being below that will give you XP of the tier the highest available band. How reputation is calculated in a shifting tomb. So stage one, the base amount of reputation is 100 reputation per minute spent in a tomb up to three minutes. After three minutes, the base rate increases at half the speed. As an example, let's assume the tomb takes us four minutes. This means you will earn 300 plus 50, equaling 350 reputation. Stage two, the reputation is then scaled based on your current levels. If you have all the levels to participate in a tomb at level 90 or above, you are placed in a top band. All level 70 or above, you are placed in a mid band. Otherwise, you are in the low band. Depending on the level band, determines how much your reputation is multiplied by. Using our example of a 4 minute tomb, the numbers are as follows. For the low band, the base amount times 1.111 scaled amount will equal 388. Mid band is multiplied by 1.333, which will yield 466. And the high band is multiplied by 1.666 to equal out to 583. Moving on to stage three, the number is now scaled one more time based on the progress of objectives as a fraction. If the objective is zero out of zero, it's considered complete. Having our high rep value, let's see how different completion rates affect the final reputation. Basically moving on, it's just a percentage multiplied by the actual base amount, assuming the two previous stages we talked about. Moving on to the Slayer Dungeon, the Slayer creatures were given reputation based on the amount of kills per hour and difficulty to kill. Seen in the below images is how the reputation was calculated. So you can see here each kill based on the Slayer level has a certain rep per kill. Based on the amount of kills per hour, it is assigned a certain rep per hour. So yeah, they all range somewhere between 4k and 6k, roughly. Next up is the Slayer Creature XP per hour. Basically, you can pause this if you want, but it ranges anywhere from like around 375k Slayer XP per hour up to 750 plus per hour based on your playstyle, etc. This is just base XP, is not counting for things like boosts, but that's all well and dandy. Again, pause it if you want to check out this particular part. So anyways, moving on, we balanced the rates of reputation around how many kills we got per hour and leaned more toward the hardcore style of gameplay instead of a more lean back style. However, as stated later in the post, we'll be tweaking the reputation from these creatures both on and off tasks. Moving on to more methods of reputation. City quests. City quests occur naturally over time when skilling throughout Gilnor. Your 
able to check out whether or not you have a city quest available by speaking to Erluck the camel in the merchant's district, who will then point you to the direction of the quest giver. Once on a task, you will either need to collect items or slay enemies, depending on which quests you've received. Once a task has been completed, you will be awarded with experience related to the task. A city quest has three steps, and once all three have been completed, the city quest is complete. Completing the city quest will award reputation with your current selected faction. Soul Obelisks Every now and then, a soul obelisk will spawn in one of the districts in Manifoss. This can be siphoned for runecrafting and prayer XP. If you are not level 50 in prayer, you will receive double runecrafting experience instead up to a cap of 20k reputation a day. Each obelisk that spawns will last for a total of 7 minutes and 30 seconds. It's also worth remembering that whilst the soul obelisks are a nice reputation distraction, they aren't safe and will deal damage if siphoning from them, so be careful. Menophyte gift offerings. Menophyte gift offerings are obtained through pickpocketing the merchant district as a reward from completing a shifting tube and as a reward from a city quest. These can either be opened, given the loot inside, or they can be handed to a faction leader of any district for reputation. The reputation per each different offering is small gifts 350, mediums 900, and large 1350. So moving on to some plan changes. We're planning to buff the reputation gain from Slayer creatures by 50% both on and off tasks. Gift offerings will be available from Sarcophagi in the Shifting Tombs. Shifting Tombs is going to be made more solo friendly. Completing a random city quest in Menophos will award 2k reputation with your current selected faction up from 100. City quests will retroactively give players the extra reputation on any city quests completed prior to the update. Each Slayer Codex hand-in will grant reputation including including ones made before the update. In the meantime, we will keep reading your feedback, analyzing the game data, and looking to make other tweaks or improvements. Thanks, Mod Curse. So that wraps it up for the Reputation of Menafos dev blog. Hopefully that clears up anything or any concerns you may have about it. And that is it for the video. If you liked it, hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, you want to stay up to date on all things RuneScape related, you're already in the right place. So hit that subscribe button, probably to keep you up to date. Anyways, I appreciate you watching my dogs. I am out. Peace. Oh, dear,